All right, hi guys, this is Mr. Manning, and this video is going to be about the four stages of computing, or sometimes it's called the computing cycle. And basically what this is, it's the four stages that a computer goes through uh, as a user is uh, using it, or as somebody is asking it to do things. So the things that you will need for this, um, you might want to pull up this PowerPoint, although I'm going to be using it here on the video, so you might not need it. And then you're probably also going to want to have this graphic, which I have provided to you on Canvas. Uh, so this graphic uh, basically is going, we're going to go through all four stages. You can see that this is a cycle, so this happens over and over and over again. And I'm going to tell you what each stage is, give you a short description of that stage. We're going to talk about some of the parts of the computer that are involved in that stage. And then finally, I've got kind of an analogy that we're going to use. I call it the human example. We're going to basically compare how the computer goes through these stages with uh, how us as humans operate. Okay, so let's get started. So stage number one is called the input stage. And basically during this stage, this is when the person using the device or the computer uh, asks it to do something. So this is like inputting information into the computer. Uh, we are telling it or asking it to do something for us. And some common examples of ways that we do this are these three photos right here. The keyboard, the mouse, or depending on what device you're using, possibly a touchscreen. So like on the keyboard, as you are typing on the keyboard, you are hitting different keys. Uh, it might be letters, might be numbers, could be the space bar, the shift key, the enter key. It doesn't really matter, but you are giving the computer commands as you are hitting each individual key. Same thing with the mouse. Every time you move it around or click it or use a little scroll uh, wheel, you are once again inputting information into the computer. You're asking it to do something. And then finally with the touch screen, you, every time you tap the screen or use two fingers to uh, uh, shrink or enlarge something on the screen or the different types of gestures that tab tablets can do, um, you are once again asking the computer to do something. A fourth one that we might want to think about, and I don't have a picture of it here, but you also might want to consider voice recognition. Uh, so like whenever you're talking to your cell phone, like if you're using Siri or one of the um, uh, new devices like Google Home or uh, Amazon Echo, you are basically using your voice to input information. All right. <clears throat> the human example for this is our five senses. So uh, whenever we smell something, see something, hear something, taste something, or touch something, uh, that part of our body is giving us information about what is around us. So that's kind of like what's happening with the computer during the input stage. We are giving it information. We are inputting information. We are saying, hey, do this thing for us. All right. So let's move on to stage two. This is the processing stage. So this is after we have asked the computer to do something, it now needs to start processing it or thinking about what it is that we want it to do and how it's going to perform that action for us. Um, so some common devices that are used during this is the motherboard. And hopefully you remember that from our previous discussion about the parts of the computer. The motherboard is the brain of the computer. So whenever we add, click a key on the keyboard or move the mouse, that signal is being translated into the motherboard and it is thinking about how it's going to react to that. So the motherboard has two parts to it. Uh, RAM, which this is a photo of RAM right here, or a processor, which this is a picture of a processor. And then, of course, right here is the motherboard itself, all of those things together. And I already mentioned this, but uh, our human example is just like the computer example. This would be our brains. So this would be uh, whenever we uh, hear something, our ears send that signal into our brain. Our brain thinks about what we just heard. You know, so it might be something as simple as you talking to a friend and you're hearing what they're saying, or you might hear like a really loud noise and it startles you and you, and you react to that noise. 
but it doesn't really matter what um, input our five senses are giving us. It, our brain is the one that determines what it is, and then it also determines how we're going to react to that. Okay, moving on to the third stage. So the third stage for computers is the storage stage. And there's actually two types of storage. There is this thing called long-term storage, <clears throat> which you uh, remember or which you ask the computer to remember for a really long time. In fact, probably forever until you delete it. Or we also use short-term storage. Um, which would be like we're asking the computer to do something, but then we don't really want it to remember it. It can forget about it after it's done its thing. So some common devices that are part of this part. For long-term storage, a common device is the hard drive. And, you know, we talked about this in a previous video, but the hard drive is where we store all the things that we want the computer to keep for us for a long time. So this might be music files, videos, photos, games, whatever. We don't want the computer to forget about those. We want to be able to return back to them later. Uh, another long-term storage device would be a flash drive, except this one is a portable storage. So it, we also want to keep things that are uh, more permanent, but if we use a flash drive, we want to be able to move them from device to device. And then short-term storage would be the RAM. So the RAM is in two parts of the computing cycle. It's in the storage stage, and then it's also back here in the processing stage. So once again, back to our human example, this is kind of like our brain. Our brain is also in both parts of this cycle. So not only does our brain think about and process information, but it also remembers information too. So, you know, whenever we have that uh, big test or whenever we want to remember how to get to somebody's house or whatever you're trying to think of, uh, hopefully you have committed that information to long-term storage and you're able to uh, bring it back up whenever you need to. But there's also a lot of things that happens to us during the day that we don't want to remember forever. There's no need to, you know, so we don't need to know uh, what we uh, were thinking at 1048 in the morning three weeks ago, right? That's unnecessary and really impossible for us to remember that stuff. So that goes into our short term uh, memory, but then we quickly forget it. All right, and then finally the fourth stage is the output stage, and this is where the computer basically shows us or tells us that it has done the thing that we asked it to way back in stage number one, the input stage. So the most common output device is the monitor uh, or the screen. So this is where we see that the computer has done what we asked it to. If we're typing on the keyboard, those letters and numbers appear as we're typing. If we are moving the mouse around, we see the cursor move. If we click the mouse, we see uh, whatever we clicked on, you know, uh, become active. We also might be able to hear uh, what the computer has done. Maybe it makes a sound or it starts playing music, right? Uh, so we might be using our speakers, headphones, this device right here is the video card and the uh, sound card. And once again, those are the uh, objects inside of the computer that run the monitor and run the speakers. So they would also be part of the output stage. All right, and then finally, our human example is our reaction. So whenever we uh, sense something, our input stage, and then our brains think about that thing, and it either recalls information or it immediately uh, reacts to it. The way that we react is our output stage. So imagine if I am uh, touching something and my brain tells me that it is very hot and I am actually getting burned. I am going to quickly yank my hand away from that thing. And that's my reaction. That is my output stage. I am removing my hand from the thing that is really hot. Okay. So what I want you guys to remember is that this is a cycle. So you can see that it goes over and over. In fact, this cycle ha happens so incredibly quickly that we don't even notice that it's happening. You know, when you hit a key on the keyboard, the letter uh, appears almost instantaneously. 
However, the computer did go through all four stages, but it did it so quickly that we don't really think about it. And this is actually a good thing for us as users. If the computer took a really long time to go through these four stages, we wouldn't be patient enough to use it, right? I mean, we always get frustrated if we're watching a video and all of a sudden it starts buffering and you're like, oh gosh, what's happening? You know, did I lose my internet connection or whatever? That becomes frustrating, frustrating to us and we want to uh, move on to the next thing. We're not patient enough. So these four stages need to happen quickly for us to continue to use the computer. All right, guys.